everyone, it's Sal here. Welcome back to another perfume video. I hope you're doing well. So today we are going to be talking all about how many fragrances I have purchased in the year of 2021. So I just want to talk through all of the fragrances which I've purchased this year so far. So um, essentially this is going to be one huge haul. As you can imagine there are a fair few here to show you. Um, I have bought quite a lot. Um, as you might remember, I posted a video at the very start of this year titled My Last Ever Haul. Now, I sort of thought that that might have been my last haul just due to the fact that I had so many perfumes in my collection and quite a lot of the perfumes I had in my collection I just wasn't using that often and I didn't want to be buying any more fragrances until I'd used up my bottles and uh, cleared some space for them essentially. Um, however, after I posted that video, I subsequently uh, did two declutter videos and um, all of the perfumes which I showed in those declutter videos, they all found new homes. So I did declutter around about 20 fragrances. I then had a lot more space available um, in my perfume storage area. I'd cleared a lot of space. Um, I'd also managed to recoup some finances as well from selling the fragrances, um, which I then decided to reinvest back into my collection. First of all, before we jump into the video, if you're new to my channel, then welcome. I create uh, weekly perfume videos. So every Wednesday and Saturday, I post a new perfume video on my YouTube channel. So if that's something which interests you, then please don't forget to click the subscribe button below. Um, also, you can activate the notification bell as well if you would like to be notified every time I upload. So at the start of this year, I picked up um, Flora Botanica. This is a fantastic fragrance. It's actually a repurchase. So I did used to own this perfume when I was a teenager and I really liked it. And um, upon hearing many reviewers on YouTube mention this gem of a fragrance, I decided it was time to pick it up again because I was reminded of how beautiful it is. This is just stunning. I've talked about this a lot on my channel, so I won't really give a review as such, um, otherwise we would be here forever if I reviewed all of these. <laughs> um, but it's a really unique, fresh, refreshing rose kind of scent. Um, really fantastic, perfect for spring and summer and all year round actually, but I just adore this one. The bottle is beautiful. So I picked this one up um, kind of at the beginning of this year, I would say. So that is uh, Flora Botanica from Balenciaga. Then I remember um, I hauled this near the start of this year as well. So um, Gucci Bloom is another fragrance which I picked up near the beginning of 2021. So maybe around February, I can't remember, like January, February time, I think. And it's absolutely beautiful. I love this fragrance. It's a really refined, slightly mature, elegant, sophisticated, tuberosey, jasmine kind of fragrance kind of powdery, very rich, slightly green and authentic smelling to me. It's beautiful and I just love this one. Another fragrance I picked up was C. Fiori from Armani. Now this was um, uh, recommended to me quite a lot and I heard a few people talk about this. Um, Roxelle style in particular, I remember her mentioning this on Instagram. Um, and it really intrigued me and I think her review was spot on. She explained this fragrance really really well and I'm so glad that I heard her mention it because it is so stunning. It's really really sweet, creamy, slightly uh, vanillic and fruity, slightly musky, really voluptuous, beautiful, feminine and um, just stunning you guys. I love this one so that is C. Fiori. Next up we have Dolce & Gabbana, The Only One. Now I remember um, hauling this, I think, uh, kind of really near the start of this year. So this is one that I picked up quite a few months ago now. It's absolutely divine. I love this one. Um, I'd heard that there were similarities between this fragrance and Black Opium. However, personally, I don't really smell any similarities other than the fact that they both have vanilla and coffee. Um, but even then, to me, they don't smell alike. So I'm really glad to have both in my collection. I think they are different enough to own both. Um, I do think if you already know that you love um, Black Opium or those kind of fragrances, then I think this would be a relatively safe blind buy for you. Um, if you already love Black Opium and things like that, then I would say um, you're probably going to love this one as well. It's really stunning, very rich caramel, this pear in here, 
there's um, some violet I believe so it's kind of unusual actually really stunning this is one of those fragrances that almost um, does it all because it has those fruity aspects in there it's got those slightly powdery floral aspects it's got the caramel so it's a little bit uh, gourmand well it's actually quite um, gourmand I would say yeah and it's sweet and it's feminine and perfect for every day I would say it's just so stunning and quite addictive as well so I absolutely love this one so that's Dolce & Gabbana the only one and next up I'm just going to mention these all together because um, they're all sort of similar and um, I'll just mention them all together so these are my three Chloe fragrances which I picked up now I am um, purchased these after I decluttered my original Chloe Eau de Parfum. That fragrance found a new home. Um, that perfume's very nice but it was just a bit strong for me and I'd kind of um, had enough of it because I had it for years. I had it for quite a long time so that fragrance found a new home and then I kind of found myself um, wanting a Chloe fragrance again because they are all very nice fragrances um, and I kind of thought that now I decluttered that fragrance I thought I would have a look and see what else Chloe has to offer um, for the fragrances and I found these three really lovely scents. So we have Chloe Low, this is an eau de toilette concentration, really nice dewy watery bouquet of um, pink florals I would say, really nice and feminine. This fragrance actually is exactly how I would imagine Delina La Rose to smell. I've never smelt that fragrance myself but maybe if um, some of you guys have smelled Chloe Lowe and Delina La Rose, maybe you could let me know if I'm right um, because I really have a feeling that this is basically exactly how Delina La Rose smells and I could be totally wrong because I haven't actually smelt it but from reading the descriptions of both I just think they sound so similar from the descriptions. This one's perfect for the high heat, it's really refreshing, really nice for work as well. I've been wearing this one a lot to work and it's just so pleasant. I've actually been reaching for this one quite a lot. Um, it's a fragrance I really, really enjoy. So that's Chloe Lowe. And we have these two here. I would say Chloe Lowe is my favourite from the three Chloe's. Um, these ones are also very nice. Rose to Chloe here is another Eau de Toilette fragrance. It's a really nice, refreshing slightly green pink rosy scent to be fair i do like reaching for this one as well but i would say chloe low for some reason has the slight edge over this one for me i just think it's really really beautiful and um, this one's also very nice though so that's rose to chloe the eau de toilette and then we have chloe love story which to be honest with you i'm not head over heels for this fragrance it doesn't really inspire me an awful lot it's kind of a bit flat for some reason there's something about this fragrance which um it's just a little bit flat for me. It's a very nice, pleasant, clean, white floral sort of fragrance. It almost reminds me of clean linen. Um, it has a slightly citrusy nuance to it. So actually, I think if you're working um, as a healthcare professional or something like that, um, I would say this would be a really perfect fragrance for that kind of scenario because it's really not going to offend anybody and things like that. But um, but for some reason it's just not been inspiring me recently and I am wondering whether this might be a declutter, um, I'm just not sure. But that's Chloe Love Story, Rose to Chloe and Chloe Low, which I picked up this year. The next fragrance I picked up was this beauty here, Lintrudy from Givenchy. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration and I absolutely love this one. Um, this is a beautiful, rich, um, deep bubblegummy tuberose fragrance. There's some vetiver in here which I don't normally like but um, the way they've done it in this fragrance is actually really refined, it's very well blended and the vetiver doesn't bother me at all in here. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh I absolutely adore this fragrance you guys, it's stunning. This is a must try for any tuberose lover. Um, it just has that really nice depth to it, it's not this is definitely not a light scent at all. This is very rich, this is very opulent I would say. It's not too intense though. This fragrance has a really nice presence to it, it has a really nice weight. There's a pear note on the top notes as well I believe, there's some orange blossom as well giving it um, a slightly more playful like little aspect to it. It's quite sweet, 
very refined, slightly more mature, I would say. Now, this is not a fragrance which I've been reaching for an awful lot recently, but I do think that that's just because um, it's so beautiful and it's almost slightly dressy in nature. It's also quite rich and deep, like I say, so I feel that um, maybe in the autumn and winter, those would be the best sort of uh, times of year for this fragrance. Um, maybe on a colder day, I would want to wear this fragrance, but at the moment in general, I've not really been wearing it an awful lot. Um, but I do absolutely love it. Um, so this was a very successful purchase indeed. So that's Lintrudy from Givenchy. Another fragrance which I've added to my perfume collection this year is this beauty here, Scandal by Night. Now, this was actually a perfume swap that I did with a a uh, wonderful subscriber, so I didn't actually purchase this, I swapped one of my fragrances for this fragrance and I love this one, but again it's not a fragrance which I reach for an awful lot, but that's just because this um, perfume is absolutely outrageous. It's so bold, it's very very seductive, like unapologetically so. Um, so for that reason I just haven't really had an occasion to wear this fragrance to yet. Um, I can imagine this being an absolutely killer scent for either a night out, going out with friends, going out on a date, that kind of thing. I think this would be an absolutely killer fragrance for those kind of scenarios. I really, really do. This is the kind of fragrance which I will wear when I want to get noticed. These kind of scenarios. Thoroughly beautiful, intoxicating, outrageous fragrance. So that's Scandal by Night. Another fragrance I picked up this year was Armani My Way. Um, I love this fragrance. This is a very light-hearted, um, bubbly, youthful, carefree take on a bubblegummy uh, tuberose fragrance. So where your Lintrudy from Givenchy is a bit more mature, it's slightly more serious maybe, um, and a bit more refined. This one is definitely more playful, it's more light-hearted and things like that, um, more easygoing as well. I just love this one for every day. It's a real mood lifter as well and it helps to motivate me to get things done, which I just love about it. So that is Armani My Way. Now next up are these two really fun juicy couture fragrances. Now I really wanted to pick up the original Viva La Juicy because I wanted to compare it to my little sample of Zerzhov Grand Ballo. Um, I've done a full video on that um, which I'll either leave linked up here or I'll link it in the description box. Sometimes I forget to put the cards on. Um, so I wanted to purchase this fragrance because I'd heard how similar it was to Grand Ballo. And to me, it's certainly a very good dupe. Um, I really, really enjoy this fragrance. I think it's really fun, really flirty. It's kind of a treat to smell this, if you know what I mean. It's very sweet, very, um, it's just yummy. It's just beautiful. It's got that caramel note in there. It's got the gardenia. It's got the honeysuckle as well. Just all around a beautiful, sweet, um, a playful, girly fragrance. And I do think it smells quite similar to the Zerzhov Grand Ballo fragrance uh, that I was really interested in as well. So that was quite a pleasant surprise. So that's the original Viva La Juicy fragrance. Um, I also picked up this stunner here. This is Gold Couture. Now I've heard a lot about this fragrance over the last year from Jeremy Fragrance and from other reviewers on YouTube. I'd heard really good things about this one and um, I'm really glad I've purchased it. It's really beautiful. It's quite a nice easy reach sort of fragrance. Really beautiful, sweet, um, gourmand kind of scent. Um, the fragrance that this really reminds me of actually is Jessica Simpson Fancy and if you really like that fragrance then I do think you'd like this. To me they both smell very similar actually. In my opinion they're both very very similar so like I say I don't think you need both um, but oh this fragrance is just so beautiful it's such a nice easy reach and I'm really glad I picked it up so that is Viva La Juicy Gold Couture. Next up we have this absolute beauty, you guys, Alien Fusion. I am obsessed with this fragrance. I've talked about it a lot on my channel. Um, it's really stunning. It's a tube rosy, um, slightly warming, sweet, cinnamony, beautiful fragrance. This is balsamic, very sweet, like I say, addictive, stunning, feminine, all of those good things and I just love wearing this one. It kind of helps to balance out my moods as well. I don't know how 
but it just kind of balances out my moods. I do also think this would be signature scent worthy. I think this is just all around an absolutely fantastic fragrance. If you already enjoy Alien and you want something a bit smoother, a bit sweeter and things like that, then I think you're gonna love this one. Um, and I just absolutely adore it. I would say this is probably up there with um, one of the most successful blind buys I've ever had, just because I really didn't know um, whether I was gonna like this one or not. I'm not a big fan of overly spicy fragrances. Um, so I was slightly uh, apprehensive when I heard that this was meant to be a spicy version of Alien. Um, however, I was very pleasantly surprised to discover that it's not spicy at all in my opinion. It's just um, slightly warm from the spices in there. There's um, a little bit of cinnamon, um, the tuberose, it's really sweet. It's not overly spicy in my opinion at all. So I absolutely adore this one, you guys. It's just incredible. So that's Alien Fusion. Next up today we have another stunning uh, tuberose fragrance and that is Ralph Lauren Woman. I love this one, this was actually a very recent purchase of mine, I got it last week and oh my goodness. This almost reminds me of a cross between Armani My Way, you've got your um, Lintrudy from Givenchy, so you've actually you've got the kind of slightly more mature rich uh, qualities from Lintrudy in here but you've got the very bubblegummy sweet light-hearted feeling as well from Armani My Way. This one also slightly reminded me of um, C. Fiori as well so there was some elements of this fragrance in here as well just with the fruity nature I think there's some blackcurrant in here um, and that reminded me of the opening of this fragrance so if you enjoy um, C. Fiori, if you enjoy Armani My Way, Lintrudy from Givenchy and if you like uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal as well. If you like all of those fragrances then I think you're gonna love this. This is just such a likeable, beautiful, sophisticated, um, feminine fragrance and it's very versatile as well in my opinion so you could really wear this anywhere. Um, you could dress it up or down. Creamy, smooth, fruity, tuberose, orange blossom, if I remember correctly, there's actually some uh, hazelnuts in the base notes of this as well, which is maybe giving it that um, really nice depth. It's just so beautiful. It's got that um, nice likeable quality to it that a lot of designer fragrances have, but I wouldn't say that this smells generic. It doesn't smell boring or anything like that. It actually smells very refined. Oh my goodness, it's just amazing. I would say um, I don't often like to recommend blind buying because everybody is different and something I love and think is very easy to like you might not like it so I don't like to say whether something's an easy blind buy or not but actually I have to say I do think that this is probably up there with one of the best um, perfumes you could blind buy just because I really can't see anybody disliking this if you enjoy fruity fragrances if you enjoy sweet tuberosey scents and if you like all of the designer perfumes which I just mentioned if you love all of that then I think you're gonna love this one to be quite honest with you it's just beautiful also I really enjoy the bottle I think it looks really luxurious um, it has Ralph Lauren embossed there and on the cap and it just feels very like substantial it feels very good quality which is something that I really like in perfume bottles as well. So this one is just absolutely fantastic and a really successful blind buy of mine this year. Now moving on, um, we are getting there you guys, don't worry, I've only got, um, oh, I've got maybe, I've got seven more to go including this one um, and I'll try not to take too long on each one. <laughs> um, so we've got Balenciaga Paris, really nice, demure, serious, uh, formal fragrance for work, you know, any kind of serious occasion, meetings, um, if you're working with patients, if you're working with um, anybody that you don't want to offend, I would really reach for this one. This is really fantastic for work, for interviews, um, for anything formal like that where you really don't want to um, have a fragrance that's too playful, a fragrance that's too frivolous, you don't want anything like that, then I would check this one out. It's really fantastic. Next I'm going to show you these two Mongolan fragrances which I picked up quite recently. I purchased the new addition to the line um, Sparkling Bouquet. I really enjoy this one. I think it's going to come into its own in the summer. I really do think that this is a fragrance which would be fantastic for the summer actually. 
quite a light-hearted um, fruity floral take on the original Mongolan. If the original Mongolan was a bit too heavy and aromatic for you then I would give this one a try. Um, it's just really pleasant. There's some peony in there, there's some jasmine, there's pear as well, there's sandalwood, musk and of course the lavender and vanilla combination which at first I didn't think was too strong. Um, however, upon wearing it for a full day to work, I did actually notice more of that lavender and vanilla combination coming out, which was just really lovely and um, I really enjoy this one. So that is Mongolan Sparkling Bouquet. And next we have a hair mist that I picked up um, because I do really enjoy hair mists. I think they're really fun ways of um, applying fragrance. I think it's a really nice idea. So I picked up this hair mist of the floral version of Mongolan, which I didn't have before. Um, so I purchased that fragrance in a hair mist form. Really nice uh, citrusy floral version of Mongolan and I really enjoy this one as well. Next we have Elisab Le Parfum and this one you guys is absolutely incredible. This is a really beautiful seductive feminine fragrance. So feminine so stunning with that patchouli and jasmine. This is really a powerhouse fragrance. It's very powerful um, and womanly and absolutely stunning. If you love jasmine, you have to try this one. That's all I'm gonna say. It's just fantastic and I absolutely love it. So that is Elisab Le Parfum. I picked up these two Nina Ricci fragrances. Nina Ricci um, Rose Extase and Nina Ricci Lickstas Rose Absolu, I think is the name of this one. And I really like this one here. I, I wasn't as big a fan of this one because of that really prominent metallic white musk note in there. Um, I am gonna give this one another try though, but if I do keep smelling that really prominent white musk, that synthetic white musk note in, in here, then I do think um, this will probably be a declutter, unfortunately, but I might try and give it another chance, I'm not sure. And this one here, the Absolute version, is just incredible in my opinion. It is a dupe for uh, Maison Francis Kirkjan's Oud Satin Mood, for sure, because I have a little sample of that one and I tried it, and it was a bit too much for me, I think, just with that Oud note. This one, however, is a bit softer on the Oud, it's not as intense that way, it's a bit smoother and um, there's more emphasis on the jammy rose kind of smell. Perfect fragrance and I can't wait to uh, wear this more in the colder months. And now we have my most recent purchase actually, I received this in the post yesterday I think, um, and it is this beauty here, Libra Intense from Yves Saint Laurent. So if you've been following my channel you'll know that this fragrance was on my wish list and I have finally decided to pick it up. It's actually my scent of the day and I absolutely love this one you guys. Very beautiful, rich, aromatic, sweet, lavender vanilla fragrance with your ambergris in here giving it a real richness. You've got your orchid accord in here, orange blossom, it's just absolutely stunning you guys. I love this one. I think it's so powerful. It's so feminine. It's got um, a kind of powdery cloud sort of feeling to it as well. Just so um, bold, beautiful and feminine and I absolutely love it. Also I cannot get over the bottle. I think this is just absolutely stunning this bottle. It looks so classy. Um, it has that slightly um, minimalistic look about it. I just think it looks absolutely beautiful, this bottle. So looking at all of these bottles which we've gone through, I've counted 20. So by the looks of things, I have added 20 new bottles to my collection um, this year so far. And considering that I decluttered around about 20 bottles, um, at the beginning of this year as well. I don't think that's too bad. I have definitely been a lot more careful with which fragrances I actually purchase. Um, I've been sampling more, I've been taking more time to decide instead of just um, buying things on a whim. I don't really do that anymore. I do take the time to look into it and um, make sure that it's a fragrance that I really want to be investing in. Um, so I don't think that's too bad. 20 fragrances uh, considering I did declutter around about that amount at the start of this year. I'm not sure if you'll agree with me on this one, but I personally think that my slow buy year is going quite well. Um, I've basically replenished my collection 
from the ones I decluttered and in general like I say I'm being much more careful with which ones I purchase because I do have limited space actually and um, I don't have a huge amount of space to store my perfumes. There are actually a few fragrances that I'm thinking of maybe decluttering at some point soon. Um, I don't have enough yet to do a full declutter video but I am starting to think about it. Um, I am actually being a bit more brutal with that as well. So before where I would hold on to a fragrance for a very long period of time, um, now I am much more inclined to just try and declutter it. So there we have it you guys, those are all of the fragrances which I've purchased this year so far. We are almost halfway through the year so I think um, that's an okay amount I think. Thank you so very much for watching, I truly appreciate you and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye!